this working now? My name is Jay Yeomans. Um, my wife, I'm better known at this school as Mimi's husband. Uh, we have three kids. John's a senior, Claire's in 10th grade, and Ryan is in 7th grade. And um, my presentation is on what really bugged Thomas Jefferson. So uh, many of you know I'm in the wine business. I sell wine for a living. I also have a school in D.C. where we teach uh, classes on wine. This is one of the stories that I really enjoy. Wine is, to me, much more about the alcohol. It's about history and art and science. And this is the story of Thomas Jefferson. And then, as many of you know, he was an accomplished architect. He was one of the founding fathers. President of the United States, but he was a failed wine producer. So why did Thomas Jefferson want to produce wine? Well, besides the obvious that it was fun to drink, Jefferson also wanted to start a business, and a lot of his friends enjoyed wine like he did, Madison, and Franklin, and others. Now, Jefferson spent five years in France as our minister, and he fell in love with wine. He got the bug. He also saw that in Europe, wine was safer to drink than water. And for a lot of people, it was part of the meal, the everyday meal. Now, what really bugged Thomas Jefferson was at the declaration, signing of the Declaration of Independence, they had to drink a sweet Portuguese wine rather than a red wine from the US because the wine was so awful in those days. There was actually, wine had been produced in the colonies for years, there was actually what was called Act 12. There was a law that required every individual to plant 10 grape tin vines and produce wine. The wine was dreadful, though. This law quickly got done away with. The local grapes where they were making wine from was a family of grapes called Labrusca. Now, Labrusca is very tart, has big bitter seeds, and it tastes foxy. The word Foxy may not mean anything, but think of a wet dog. Okay? Now, I love wine, and I love dogs, but I don't like my wine to taste like wet dogs. So Jefferson thought, well, I can't use the local indigenous grapes. I'm going to use what they use in Europe. So he brought these vines back. He planted them, but they failed miserably. Now, this family of grapes is called vinifera. And vinifera grapes, if you know of, such as Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, but he could not get these grapes to grow. So what he did, he went out and he looked for an expert in Europe. In walks in Philip Mozzi. Philip Mozzi was, uh, he was an Italian and he was a good friend of uh, Franklin and George Washington and he convinced them, I can grow grapes in Virginia, no problem. This is not gonna be a problem. It was a big problem. So he moves to Monticello and he plants a vineyard there and for 30 years, they tried to grow grapes. The grapes died. Every, every, every time they planted a new vineyard, it died. They just couldn't figure out why these grapes from Europe, Europe were dying. Well, it turns out what really was bugging Thomas Jefferson was this little bug called phylloxera. This bug's indigenous to the US, especially the East Coast, and it feeds on the roots of these vines. Now, our local grapes are tolerant to this, but not not vinifera. This is a vineyard that's suffering from phylloxera. It takes about five or six years for phylloxera to kill vinifera. It surely, slowly shuts down the vascular system and the vine will die. Now, fast forward a hundred years and all of a sudden phylloxera shows up in Europe. And vine cuttings have been taken to Europe for decades. But it it, for almost 50 years, wiped out half the vineyards in Europe. Half the vineyards in France were done away with. It was, it was devastating, and producers in France left in droves. Many went to South America, many went to Spain. The problem was that phylloxera was making its way over on ships, but when they were on sailing ships, they would die. When the steamship came about, they were making it um, still alive. All right, so the solution, the French had a huge uh, reward for anybody who could come up with a solution. And what they came up with was to graft the European roots uh, vines onto our rootstock, and it worked. 
it worked really well. And today, as you can see, this is a, a vine being planted in the ground. The top half is European, the bottom half is American. This is the only way that we can grow grapes made from European grapes and rootstock or uh, uh, vines in our country. Fast forward to 1990 and flocks were strikes again. 90% of the vineyards in California in the 90s had to be replanted because flocks were had mutated. And it cost the California industry billions and billions of dollars to replant. Today, vinifera is growing all over the world. 99% of it is on American rootstock all over the world. 90, 95% of these vines are vinifera. Now, Thomas Jefferson failed miserably to grow grapes and make wine. But somewhere I think he's, he's smiling because he knows that without American rootstock, basically the wine that we know it wouldn't exist. So somewhere I think Tom's toasting. So thank you very much.